Welcome to lesson 29 of industrial instrumentation. In this lesson, we will consider uh, we will cover the optical electronic sensor 2. And uh, basically, the contents will be uh, will like this that we will first cover the basics of fiber optics and then uh, some basics of fiber optics because we have already discussed some basics in the industrial in the uh, lesson 28. We will cover details the transmission supply in the optical fiber. Uh, then I will come to the uh, fiber optic base sensors. Let us look at the lesson. So, optical electronic sensor 2 contains introduction to fiber optics, traveling of light through the cable, then monomode cable, multimode gradient index cable and fiber optic sensors. These are the basic things we will cover. At the end of the lesson, now please one thing you note that uh, in this uh, particular lesson, sometimes I will uh, tell the cable, but cable means basically I want to uh, mention that it is a basically fiber opt op optical fibers, nothing other than that, right. So, at the end of the lesson, the viewer will know how does the light travel in optical fiber, fiber optic switch switches, intrinsic fiber optic sensors, extrinsic fiber optic sensors, right. Now, you see this is the uh, this is a typical uh, a fiber optics you can look at uh, lights are I mean how the light travels in optic but this is basically we have shown a um, step index fiber. So, in the step index fiber you see here please note that I am using the British English. So, it will be fiber like this one or I can take the other pen. So, it is fiber. And now, when the light travels, it always goes through a, a total internal reflection. You see here light is traveling and there is a incidence is such a way that it will have a total internal reflection. So, that no, nothing no, none of the lights will be lost in the uh, in the cladding and totally it will be reflected. So, that the refractive index of this one of the core, this is a core, this is actually the core and this is the cladding right, these are the cladding. So, the diffractive index of the core is higher than the, that of uh, higher than that of the cladding and incident lights we actually arrange to and fall in such a way. So, that the light will get a total internal reflection. So, it will follow a zigzag uh, fashion please note it will be like this one. So, it is not like this it will be like this light will follow like this one. So, this phi should be greater than the critical angle of uh, incidence because if it is not more, not more than critical angle. So, there will be no total internal reflection. So, that we have to arrange for the total internal reflection. So, that even the, if this fiber is not straight, if it is bent like this one, so light can travel through this. That is the idea of this I mean optical fiber. So, even though we know the light travels on a only straight line, uh, using this total internal reflections, we can see that the in the optical fibers light can go through a bent path, right. That is a tremendous advantage and, and using that principles we have used many sense. Though, if it is a bend like this, you will find that there is a loss of intensity and all those things ok. If the light travels straight, so loss of intensity will be even though we are saying that it has a total internal deflection all those things will be some light will be dispersed ok. So, uh, using that principle we will find that we may, may made several sensors right. We will come to that later on. Now, let us come to the basic the principle how the light, light travels in a optical fiber. Transmission of light ray. The light ray shown in figure 1, this is just the previous figure known as a meridional ray as it passes through the axis of the fiber core ok. If it goes to the fiber core, so we will call meridional ray. This type of ray is the simplest to describe and is generally used when illustrating the fundamental transmission properties of the optical fibers. This is always we use these uh, fundamental transmission properties of the optical fiber. Acceptance angle look like this. You see the what is the acceptance angle, what is the numerical aperture, these are the basic definitions of the optical fiber which we will discuss in this particular lesson at the beginning of this lesson. Now, the geometry connected uh, concerned with the launching a light ray into an optical fiber is shown in figure 2 which is which illustrates a meridional ray A at the critical angle phi uh, within the fiber at the core cladding interface right. So, it is you see that here if you look at what is the, this is a figure 2, you see it is a uh, is a conical half angle, this is the uh, phi uh, theta a. So, theta is the app, I mean 
because we must know what is the uh, what is the uh, maximum value of theta is allowed because the, this face uh, if this is the face of the fiber this face should be highly polished if I fall the light in the normal directions ok that is ok, but that is not always possible especially in the case of if you use a light source as a lead light emitting diode there will be in different angle light can fall. So, I have to we must find what is the maximum angle value of theta of A so that the when light enters the core ok there is a total internal reflection right. So, that we must find it ok light you see travelling like this one and some lights are travelling like this one having the total internal reflections. This light you see this is a more than the uh, acceptance angle. So, this light will not get the total internal reflection. So, it will be reflected within the core and it is lost ok. So, this is a lost I mean this will not be transmitted through the core this will be lost in the cladding itself. Whereas, if I can make within this theta angle of incidence is within theta A we will find that we will get a total internal reflections within the core of the fiber ok. So, we must find what is that let us go back again. Now, the geometry concerns with the launching a light into the uh, into an optical fiber is shown in figure 2 which we have shown uh, which illustrates the meridian array A at the critical angle theta C within the fiber at the core cladding interface. It may be observed that the uh, this ray enters the fiber core at an angle theta A to the fiber axis and is refracted at the air core interface before transmission to the core cladding interface at the critical angle right. So, we have chosen theta A such a way so that it will be refracted in the air core because when it is launched in the air I mean one launched in the from the transmitter we are assuming that it is for some distance the light will travel in air then it is coming to the core. So, when it is in the core it is refracted and it bends towards the uh, axis right. So, that uh, bent towards the axis of the core so that the I mean and that bends to this in such a way that will be more than the so that when the light falls in the uh, core cladding junction. So, it will be more than the critical angle of the these two uh, these two medium so that we will get the total internal reflections let us look at. So, this is the things at which I talked about you see this is the uh, angle this is the array, array and this is the maximum angle uh, I mean uh, if we go beyond that I would not get any total here this we have shown here. So, you see it is more than uh, theta A so light is for another light is falling so it is not it is refracted there is no doubt about this because here the medium is refractive index here this this one of the core is higher than that of the higher than that of the cladding. So, it will be because if it is a normal so it will go away from the normal and I will get a total in, I mean I will get a bending like this one right because there is a jacket outside. So, the light will not go so it will be the cladding it will be lost right that I told you earlier also. Now, hence any rays which are incident into the fiber core at an angle greater than theta A will be transmitted to the core cladding interface at an angle less than phi C and will not be uh, total internally reflected. So, it, there will no to total internal reflections as I told you and theta is sometimes referred to as the maximum angle or total acceptance angle of the fiber optics. It is the total acceptance you know it is a solid cone right it is not a I mean uh, I mean two dimensions it is a solid cone theta is basically a solid cone. If the fiber has a regular cross section that is the core cladding uh, interface are parallel there are no discontinuities and incident incident meridional ray at the greater than the critical angle will be continued to be reflected and will be transmitted through the fiber that is very good. Now, what is the numerical aperture numerical aperture is very I mean it is a specifications of the fiber. So, you must know what is the numerical aperture. So, we will calculate here the numerical aperture for a uh, optical fiber. You see figure 3 shows a light ray incident on the fiber core at an angle theta 1 to the fiber axis which is less than theta A acceptance angle for the fiber because you see the rays to be transmitted through total internal reflections. So, incident ray might be should be always less than the acceptance angle if it is more then it will not be the total internally reflected right. So, it should be less than the uh, acceptance angle for the fiber theta A. What is figure 3 let us look at? This is our figure C. This is theta 1, the acceptance angle is slightly higher, ok. Acceptance angle will be like this one, right. Okay, this is our theta A, right. So, it is less than that. So, I getting a I mean bending, I mean because it is a higher refractive index. So, light will bend because this is the normal, 
to the plane of the surface. Okay, so it will bend like this one. This is theta two, then it will go like this one. Clear? Let us go back again. Okay. The ray path for the meridional ray, so uh, launch into the optical fiber in air at an input angle less than the acceptance angle for the fiber. Assuming that the intense face at the fiber code to be uh, normal to the axis, then considering the refractions at the air code interface and using Snell's law, we are writing N o into sin theta 1 equal to N 1 into sin theta 2, right. So, this is N 1, this is N o, this is the refractive index of air and this is the refractive index of the core and this is the angle of incidence of theta 1 and this is the angle of diffraction theta 2. So, that we can easily write the Snell's law N 0 sin theta 1 equal to N 1 sin theta 2. Okay, this is the equation number 1, where we can see here if the phi is greater than the critical angle at the core cladding interface, okay, if the phi is I mean hence equation 1 because if we write that the you see if the sin theta 2 again if you can go here. Now, this is if you take this one, so this is uh, you see this is 90 degree. So, obviously, this is this is theta 2. So, obviously, phi will be basically 90 degree minus theta 2. So, if it is that, so obviously, I can write that where phi is greater than the critical angle at the core cladding interface. If it is phi is greater than the critical angle of the otherwise, there will not total angle reflections. I can write n 0 sin theta 1, n 1 it will be actually sin of uh, pi by 2 minus phi because if you uh, take that angle as a right angle triangle, what where here this is a right angle triangle, a b c is a right angle triangle. So, obviously, I can write quite obviously that uh, n 0 sin theta 1 equal to n 1 into cos phi right or n 0 sin theta 1 so, n 1, 1 minus sin square phi to the power half, we can write this equation number 3. Again for the core cladding, we can write again, you see for the core cladding interface n 1 sin phi equal to n 2, why? If you look at, you see when the light will be deflected here, okay, because this is n 1 sin theta 2, okay, n, n 1 sin theta 2 equal to n 2 here you see here when it is deflected. So, it will use a phi. So, obviously, if I apply the total internal reflection principles, I can immediately write that expression. So, what is that? Again for the core cladding, we can write n 1 sin phi into n 2 is not it, because that will be 90 degrees. So, obviously, it will be 90. So, where phi is the critical angle of incidence of light from the core cladding, because in that case uh, if it is critical angle, if phi is the critical angle this will be sin n 2 into sin 90 degree. So, sin 90 degree is equal to 1. So, obviously, it will be n 1 sin phi equal to n 2, where phi is the critical angle of incidence light from the core to cladding. So, which I can write sin theta a equal to n 1 square minus n 2 square. What is n 1 square? I put n 1 inside. So, it will be a square n 1 square and we have here we have uh, we have n 1 n 1 square into sin square phi that is equal to n 2 square. So, ok, so to the power half. So, fine. Equation 4 apart from the relating the acceptance angle you see this is actually this n a theta a we are calling the acceptance angle right. How to find the acceptance by this reason we made it sin theta n 2 equal to sin phi equal to 1 otherwise we cannot do it. Equation 4 apart from the relating the acceptance angle to the refractive indices serves as the basis for the definitions of the important optical fiber parameter which is called the numerical aperture. Hence the numerical aperture or N a can be defined as N a equal to N naught sin theta a, theta is the acceptance angle equal to N 1 square minus N 2 square to the power half equation number 5, where theta a is the acceptance angle of the fiber. I should actually write the theta in the previous equation equation number 4. Since the N A is often used with the fiber in air, 
So, N O is actually unity because the refractive index of the year is taken as unity. So, it is simply equal to sin theta i. So, it may also be noted that the incidence incident meridional rays over the range of theta theta 1 is the incident angle. So, it should be lie between 0 and theta if it is 0. So, there is no question of total internal if light will straight away will flow uh, will uh, pass through the uh, 5 core. But if it is uh, more than uh, 0 degree, so obviously over more than 0 obviously there will be total internal reflection because it is less than theta. We have chosen theta in such a way so that the it will be any light within this range if it falls it will go through a total internal reflections. So, the light will be propagated within the fiber. The numerical aperture may also be given in the terms of the relative refractive index index difference delta between the core and the cladding which is defined as delta equal to n 1 square minus n 2 square by 2 n 1 square. So, which we can write n 1 minus n 2 by n 1 for delta if it is delta less than 1 we can write like this one equation number 6. Hence combine equation 5 and equation 6 we can write that numerical aperture equal to n 1 2 delta to the power half which is equation number 7. The relationship given in equation 5 and 7 for the numerical apertures are a very useful measure of the light collecting ability of a fiber okay, because we are must know accordingly we will make our transmitter even though I mean the fiber optic sensors also we need transmitters okay, we need receivers. Though we, we talked about as if we are only using for communication that is not actually true you will find here also the light will travel to the fiber. They are independent of the fiber core diameter and will hold for diameters as small as 8 micron. Even if it is the diameter of the core is 8 micron, the light will, I mean, these equations will follow. While the attenuation has been minimized, there is a remaining problem in that the transmission time of the parts of the beam that travel in the zigzag manner will be greater than the light which enters the fiber at 90 degree to the face and so travels in a straight line to the other end. Okay. So, obviously, if it falls on a 90 degree is not it if the light falls on a 90 degree because we are talking about so much you see uh, if I take a dark one. So, we are talking about like this one this is our fiber and we have a cladding here. So, this is our central so light is falling like this one right. But at the same time light may fall the straight line, if it falls in straight line so the angle of incidence is 90 degree is not it is not very good I can take this one ok this is 90 degree then is not it. It does not matter because it is even in that case even it falling on perpendicular to the face but the angle of incidence theta a in that case will be 0 degree is not it theta should be always less than that value otherwise there will be no total internal reflections. Anyway let us go back while attenuation has been minimized uh, there is a remaining problem in that that the transmission time of the parts of the beam that travel in the zigzag manner will be greater than the light which enters the fiber at 90 degree quite obviously a light traveling in a zigzag fashion with the, with the total internal reflections it will have some time where the light when the light I mean travels straight away through the fibers ok when the light falls with the theta equal to 0 degree obviously in that case it will take less time is not it. In practice the incident light rays to the cable will be spread over the range given by the acceptance angle and so the transmission times of the separate parts of the beam will be distributed over a corresponding length right it will be distributed transmission type of the different uh, ring. Uh, ray so in the case of multiboard fiber so this is very predominant this differential delay characteristics of the light beams are known as a modal dispersions in a optical fiber so is the dispersions of light so lights are getting more and i mean time is not equal time that it reaches at the end but this i mean a problem can be eliminated in the case of graded index fiber so it, because this with this problems what we have talked about is a multimode uh, fiber multimode uh, step index fibers will this will be more uh, you will find it easy to uh, see this one in the graded index fibers, right. It will not uh, probably not be there, this modal dispersions will be almost eliminated in the case of graded index fiber. Now, step index fiber the optical fiber with a core of constant refractive index N1 and a cladding of slightly lower refractive index N2 is known as the step index fiber. 
as simple as that. It is because the refractive index profile for this type of fiber makes a step change at the core cladding interface, clear. So, let us look at that type of I mean step index fiber or step index fiber. So, the step index fiber can be two type it can be mono mode can be multi mode. So, let us look at first mono mode let us take a white page. So, it will look like this. You see that I have a I can take a large dark pen. We cladding here. Okay, I have a fiber here. Okay, let me draw the injuring second and the center line which we studied in the first year in the drawing, like this one, right? So what will happen? You see here, this is the cladding both side cladding and center we have a is a cylindrical in shape. What will happen in the case of multi mode fiber? So, light will travel in these various directions. So, it will travel like this, then it will travel like this, right? It will like this one. It can also travel like this. It can travel like this. It can do or it can go like uh, fashion, it can go in a more like this, right in all these different cases. Now, the index profile that means the refractive index profile will look like this one, it will have a step change that means you see it will look like here. So, actually it will look like this one, right. So, this will uh, right. So, let me get back the pen again, pencil. So, it will look like this. Right. So, here the refractive index here is n 1 and here the refractive index is n 2. Right. So, this is the refractive index we are plotting r i refractive index we are plotting. So, this is the multi mode fiber. So, this is core, this is cladding, this is multi mode fiber okay. and in the case of uh, step, this is a thing, uh, please note there is, a, there is a step change of the of the uh, refractive index R i. Is not it? There is a step change here at this point. There is a step change. That is the reason we are calling step change multi mode fiber, right? We have a step. I mean, we have a uh, we have a uh, single mode fiber also, right? So it looks like this. So I have a core as before. Then I have so in the case of multi mode fiber, I am sorry, in the single mode fiber, the core diameter is extremely small. So, that is the problem, we need different sort of sources here, okay, by and I mean directional sources. So, the light will travel in this case, the refractive index profile, if I plot the refractive index Ri, it will look like. I have a small change here, so this is our N 1, this is our N 2, okay. so this is our central line, so the light also travels through this one. Okay, like this one. This is core and this is cladding as before. This I talked about the uh, 
single mode fiber, single mode step index fiber. These are we call again the step that is step index. Okay, there is a step change of the refractive index. So, index means basically we are talking of the refractive index, please note. So, there is a step change of the refractive index that is the reason we are calling it uh, single mode step I mean index fiber, okay, because there is only one mode light can transmit through the core. Core diameter is usually very small, right. Let us go back. So, this is about the step index fiber, clear. So, the optical fiber with a core of constant refractive index N1 the cladding of slightly lower refractive index N2 is known as a step index. It is because the refractive index profile for this type of fiber makes a step change at the core cladding interface. Now, a multi-mode step index fiber with a core diameter of around 50 micrometers or greater that is larger enough to allow the propagation of many modes okay, in many incident uh, situations, many modes within the fiber code. It means that the, there are many possible ray paths to the uh, fiber. Multimode is basically there is a, a different ray paths or multiple ray paths through the fiber that is we are calling multimode. However, monomode step index fiber allows the propagation of only one transverse electromagnetic mode and hence the core diameter must be of the order of 2 to 10 micron or micrometer, right. So, it is quite small we have seen that. Okay, if you find the graded index it is in between the two, right. Let us we will come to that. Now, comparison of the two modes, two modes of fiber. If I compare the two modes, the monomode step index fiber has a distinct advantage of low modal dispersions, as I told you earlier, which is basically defined as a broadening of transmitted light pulses since only one mode is transmitted. Whereas, with the multimode step index fiber, considerable dispersion may occur due to the differing, differing group velocities, as we told you, because there is a I mean light ray which is uh, going straight through the along the axis that is one speed and what is going through a total internal reflections okay, because in there is large I mean I mean incident rays of so that will have different group velocities so that at the end will there is a nodal modal dispersion right. When the bandwidth requirement is low the multimode fiber has a several advantage. Now again the problem is that in the case of multimode fiber obviously bandwidth will be narrower right has several advantage. Now, what are the advantage? If I look at the advantage that you will find that in the case of multimode fiber the uh, we do not have any restrictions on the transmitter because we have to transmit light either you have to use a lead or light emitting diode or, or, um, or laser sources. Since the light emitting diode has a little dispersed the I mean the ray will be dispersed. So, that can be used for transmissions of lights in the so, we do not need any very stringent requirements of the coherent sources and all those things which is necessary in the case of single mode fiber. So, this is a great advantage because the cost of the transmitter will be reduced even though for the low. So, therefore, if the bandwidth requirement is low obviously, we go for the multimode fiber because what will happen that I can save the money on the actually the uh, on the transmitter whereas, in the case of single mode fiber we cannot use lead uh, light emitting diodes we have to use the laser sources which is very coherent and all those things right. Now, graded index multimode fiber, the graded index fiber do not have a constant refractive index, there is no step change of the refractive index in the fiber, but a decreasing code uh, refractive index with a radial distance from a maximum value of N1 at the fiber axis to a constant value of N2 beyond the core radius in the cladding right. So, there is a step change, so you will find there is some tremendous advantage so far the modal dispersion is concerned will get. So, we are getting the advantage of the gradient in this fiber you see that we can use the same the um, uh, light sources, but we are, I mean uh, we can use the here lead, but the bandwidth will be slightly better I mean because here the what advantage is that, uh, that the light will reach at the end even whether it is going in a straight to the core or through a refract through a total internal reflections in different angles it does not matter it light will reach the end of the fiber at the same time. So, this is a great advantage. So, a multimode graded index fiber has a parabolic refracting index profile. So, let us look at that what is that actually talking about. Let us take a white page it will look like this. That means, you see the refractive index profile will look like this we have is a multimode fiber. So, it has 
it is look like this, it is going like this. This is n 2, n 2 and this refractive index n 1, but please note uh, this n 1 I should, should not write here actually there is a uh, okay. So, actually what will happen you see that n 1 is at the at the center point n 1 actually if I look at so it will the refractive index n 1 is at the center point here actually. So, the refractive index will slowly decrease to the n 2 value as I go from the center to the cladding because this is a cladding and this is a core. So, at the center the refractive index is n 1 as I move towards the cladding the refractive index slowly changes slowly decreases at the up to the at the point n 2 it is at the point the clad the I mean this core junctions it is now n 2 right. So, that is now the refractive index profile if I plot it will look like this one no more step change. So, it will look like this. So, I have so it will parabolic like this one right. So, this is our n 1 at the center. So, I can erase again. So, I can so sorry ok. Here it is n 1 and here is it is actually this will be like this one this is n 2 right. So, this is so the light will travel like this one you see light will fall and it will travel like bent path like this one because slowly light will bend right that is the reason we are calling it. Right. So, light will come like this one, it is not necessary that it is to be go to the uh, at the cladding, it is not necessary because before the incident angles between the layer because there are multiple layers. So, it will move like this one clear this is the difference. So, this is code this is cladding clear that means if I draw it will looks like this one that means if I draw if I have a fiber like this one. Okay. So, the light will fall this is our axis. So, I have a several layers. So, okay. suppose this is n 1 this is n 2 now uh, ultimately it is coming to the cladding. So, this is our cladding. Okay. So, light will fall like this it will bend again to this one this will bend again okay, until and it is gets the total internal reflection clear. So, this is uh, some I mean I can write n 1, n 2, n 3, n 4 right. So, n 1 which greater than n 2 greater than n 3 greater than n 4 this is the way I mean for visualizations or understanding the what is the gate how the gradient into fiber works this is the way we are discussing. So, it is not necessarily all the rays will go at the uh, core cladding interface in between it may have a total internal reflection if the incidence angle is more than the critical angle clear. So, multimode gradient index fiber has a parabolic uh, refractive index profile. The gradual decreases in the refractive index from the center of the core to the cladding creates many diffractions. Advantage what are the advantage? The multimode gradient index fibers exhibit for the less modal dispersion than the multimode step index fiber reasons I will show tell you. Although many different modes exist the different group velocities of the modes tend to be normalized by the refractive index gradient because of the refractive sending it because you see the light which is travel at the center and along the axis of the fiber core will have a lower speed. Okay. So, it is, if it goes to the extreme I mean uh, core cladding interface it has a higher speed because the refractive as you know the refra if the refractive index increases the speed of light also decreases. The rays travelling close to the fiber axis that I what I told you have shorter paths when they compared with the rays which is travel into the outer regions of the core. This is a path is shorter, but the speed will be lower. So, ultimately the I mean the time at the same time it will reach. So, the modal dispersion will not be there right. However, the rear near axial rays are transmitted through a region of higher refractive index and therefore, travel with lower velocity than the more extreme rays 
it compensates for the shorter path length and the deduce the dispersions of the fiber, which is going at the end, which has a, I mean, a less dis, I mean, it will take, I mean, less time because even though it is getting total internal diffraction, but the refractive index is less, so the speed of light will be higher. Those cases, the multimode graded index fibers with the parabolic refractive index profile, which we have shown have transmission bandwidth may be the order of magnitude greater than the multimode step index fiber bandwidth. So, this is a great advantage of this one. Now, let us come to the fiber optic sensors. Now, there are basis of the operation of the fiber optic sensors is the translation of physical quantity measured into a change in one of the one or more parameters of a light beam. The light parameters that can be modulated are one or more of the following intensity can will be modulated phase can be modulated, polarization will be there, wavelength can be modulated and transmission time mode can be modulated. So, in most of the cases we will find the intensity of light is very easy to modulate, okay. we will some sensors will discuss where the intensity of light is modulated. Fiber optic sensors usually incorporate either glass or plastic cables because now all plastic cables are coming up uh, very fast, uh, glass is, uh, is cheaper than the silica based uh, I mean. Um, uh, fiber, so that we must give some emphasis on the all plastic fiber cables, because it is a loss is more though in the case of all plastic cables, but it, it is cheap also it is a mechanical strength is better than the all glass fiber. All glass types are rarely used because of their fragility and plastic cables are particular advantage for the sensor application, because they are cheap and have a relative large diameter 0 0.5 to 1 millimeter making connection to the transmitter and receiver is using multimode there is no problem. So, the connection and transmitter uh, and the receiver tra transmitter to the cable to the uh, to the fiber optic cable also from the again from the cable to the receiver is easier. No is in the case of monomode fiber it is most difficult to launch a light I mean to couple a transmitter and the light itself because it is a small diameter due to small diameter that is a nuisance okay. whereas in the case of uh, plastic cables we can have a larger diameter, so the launching of light is easier, so that type of headache will not be there. The cost of the fiber optic cables itself is insignificant for sending the applications, for sensing the applications as the total cost of the sensor is dominated by the cost of the transmitter and receiver. So, always prefer lead, light emitting diode and photodiode uh, for a uh, as, uh, which are to be used as a transmitter and receiver respectively. Fiber optic sensors typically has a long life for example, the life expectancy of reflective fiber optic switches is quoted as 10 million operations. Their accuracy is also good with for instance plus minus 1 percent of full scale reading being quoted as a typical inaccuracy level for fiber optic pressure sensors. Further advantages are the simplicity, low cost, smaller size and high reliability and capability of working in many kinds of hostile environments. Hostile environments, I mean where there is a dust, okay, when there is a chance of a large electromagnetic field where the electrical connection is very hazardous, I mean you cannot use electrical uh, um, taking. Suppose I have a thermocouples and there is a, it is going to a I mean transformer where it is large magnetic field, so it will influence because if there is a surge or something in the transformers that will affect our reading, so right. And if you look at the strip chart record that which is recording the temperature that also will create problem. So, that type of problem does not come in the optical fibers, okay. that is a great advantage of, the, of this type of device. Moreover, please note in many, uh, many process industries this is uh, it is forbidden to use a high voltage, I mean especially the electrical cables, the voltage should be around 40 volts also is in the special in hydrocarbon industry which is highly inflammable industry. With that type of applications the fiber optic sensors Though previously used the people are using the pneumatic systems okay, where the safety is very high, but pneumatic system has it is a rugged I mean it is rugged obviously, but it is very large in size all those things are problems are there maintenance is difficult whereas if you use the fiber optic system in that type of situations which will I mean uh, satisfy both the things that means which is safety will be there because since it is a very low voltage and entire transmission is through the light there is no electrical connections as though right. However, in spite of these obvious merits, industrial uses is currently quite low, that is we must admit, right, even though this is quite high, because there might be there is some vicious circle, that means the people those who are, are using the conventional sensors, whether pneumatic sensors, these were not, I mean, new, you know, when the 
uh, we are using pneumatic sensors in process industries, pneumatic systems in the process industry. When the electrical system came, which is now converting all through 15 psi sub control signal to 4 to 20 milliamp, but there is also long objection. But later on, we slowly we found, we found over the decades, all this I mean um, pneumatic system were replaced by the uh, by the electrical system, like where is the current is 4 to 20 milliamp. Similarly, we also hope that in future this also this all will be replaced by the fiber optic sensors. Now, fiber optic sensors, let us look at two major classes of fiber optic sensors uh, are exist. What is the intrinsic sensors and extrinsic sensors? In intrinsic sensors, the fiber optic cable itself is a sensor, whereas in the extrinsic sensor, fiber optic cable is only used to guide the light to and from the conventional sensors, right. Right. So, that is not actually sensor as such, I mean in the I am talking about extrinsic sensors, but we are using actually the extrinsic sensor that cable to take out uh, some uh, light actually to the con uh, the conventional sensors which is might be far away. Right. We will see some that a typical situation, one of the example is uh, measuring the jet engine exhaust temperatures. Okay. I can use the optical um, uh, pyrometer, but it is very difficult online measurements. Right because jet engines, I mean jets is running at an uh, altitude of 40,000 feet and it is online measurement is difficult. So, I have to I install optical fiber where it will uh, send the light to the transmitter at the receiving end where I can use one optical fiber rhinometer might be disappearing filament type to measure the engine temperature because thermocouple will not work because the temperature is extremely high. Now, intrinsic sensors Intrinsic sensors can modulate the intensity, phase, polarization, wavelength or trans, uh, transit time of the light, right. This one sensors which modulate light intensity tend to use mainly multimode fibers, but only the monomode cables are used to modulate other light parameters. A particular feature of intrinsic fiber optic sensor is that it can if required provide distributed sensing over the distance up to 1 meter. Light intensity is the simplest parameter to manipulate in intrinsic sensor because only a simple source and detector are required, right. The various forms of switches shown uh, in figures 4 to 6 are the perhaps the simplest form of this as the light path is simply blocked and unblocked as the switch changes position, right, in the state. Let us look at modulation of the intensity of light of the transmitted light takes place in various simple forms of proximity, displacement, pressure, pH and smoke sensors and some of these are sketched in figure 7 to 9. Let us look at in proximity and displacement sensors, the latter are often given to the special name photonic sensors and the amount of reflected light varies with the distance between the fiber ends and the boundary. Okay. In pressure sensors, the refractive index of the fiber and hence the intensity of light transmitted varies according to the mechanical deformations of the fibers caused by the pressure. We will show some example. This is you see the a simple shutter switch that means if the shutter comes down obviously we will find Okay, if the shutter comes down, if the shutter comes down like this one, what will happen? You see that it will you know, modulate the light because if the light is coming, intensity it won't get any. So this is a shutter switch. This is a reflective switch. If the switches changes position, so okay, suppose if the switches changes position like this one, then what will happen? If the switches position, I mean, if the switches come to this position, so obviously the light sources on the light if you switches like position light source will not get any light I mean uh, light out so at the receiver we need only get any, get any light. So, this is a reflective switch this is also can be used for the as a switch for the fiber optic sensors. Okay. This is the uh, fiber optic uh, switches that means is the optical micro switch that means if I if the fiber bends like this one the fiber bends in this direction. So, obviously, if the light I have a light source I have a light receiver. So, obviously, I will not get in get a light output. So, this is all uses my optical micro switch, right. So, this is also an example of fiber optic switches. This is you see the applied force we are using uh, which as we say that some sensors is a uh, force measurements. What will happen if the light falls on this one, okay, this straight uh, light fiber this is a fiber, okay. So, this will be corrugated in shape, is not it? If it is in corrugated in shape, so the obviously light intensity will be modulated by looking. So, if it is if it the more and more pressure, it will be more and more corrugated. So, the intensity light here which will receive because if it is straight, obviously I will get more light. So, if it is I mean bends like this one, this will get less light. 
probably the sensing intensity of light can be calibrated in terms of force, right. This is the example intensity modulated sense roller chain pressure sensor. You see that if the chain pressure is higher, then what will happen? This uh, if the roller chain pressure is higher and higher, this is the same example if you whatever the pressure force sensors we have discussed, the more and more bending of the light beam here, okay. So, obviously, I will uh, less uh, less light will receive that the I will be at the end. So, that can be calibrated in terms of the pressure. So, the how much is the chain pressure can be calculated by looking at the intensity of light receiving at the receiving end. You see this is uh, some uh, with this uh, intensity modulator proximity sensors. If the light goes, uh, if the light is coming through this one and is getting reflected and it is light is coming out. If it is go coming more and more, so if you have a reflecting surface here, so obviously I will receive more and more light. Okay. If it is far away, so I will get less light. So, the intensity of light again here is modulated according to the position of the this um, this proximity sensors, right? Here it is the PS sensors, which will be the principles will be explained after some time. In the pH probe, the amount of light reflected back into the fibers depends on the pH dependent color of the chemical indicators in the solution around the probe tip, right? What we are launching and what we are receiving, obviously the intensity will not be same. Finally, in the form of smoke detectors, two fiber optic cables placed. Uh, either side of a space detect any reductions in the intensity of light transmission between them caused by the pressure presence of smoke. Very simple suppose I have a I mean I have a light source here and sorry let me take. So, okay, I have a uh, fiber here and I have a fiber here. So, I am getting a uh, if the smoke comes here what will happen the intensity of light received at this end this is the transmitter and this is our receiver. So, what will happen intensity of light will be decreased since the smoke will obviously decrease the intensity of light. So, the obviously this can be used as a smoke detector. So, so, it will turn on some alarm on some annunciation right. Now, a simple form of accelerometer can be made by placing a mass subject to the accelerations on a multimode fiber. The force exerted by a by the mass on the fiber causes a change in the intensity of light transmitted and thus allowing the acceleration to be determined and the typical accuracy quoted for this device is plus minus 0 0.02 g in the measurement range of plus minus 5 g. It is ex extremely good I should say and plus minus 2 percent in the measurement range of up to 100 g. A similar principle is used to probes which measure the internal diameter of the tube. The probe consists of 8 strain gauge cantilever beam which track changes in diameter giving a measurements of resolutions of 20 micron right. So, in many situations we need this term. A slightly more complicated method of uh, affecting light intensity modulation is the variable shutter sensor shown in 10 and it consists of two fixed fibers with two collimating lenses and a variable shutter between ok. It looks like this you see what will happen you see that this movement I can get from many places I can get from the pressure sensors I can get from the Bourdieu tube we have already discussed the Bourdieu tube, I will discuss that in some details light is falling in, I have a collimeter lens. So, if I can put the shutter here what basically at the outputs also will be less right. Because if you use the collimeter lens obviously there will no dispersions of light from the at that light end. So, that I can use a simple light emitting diode in the multimode fiber right for the as a transmitter. You see why I am saying this shutter can be used you see that uh, suppose I have you have studied the Bourdieu tube see tips looks like this is not it. See the pressure increases we have seen that this tip moves like this one ok. This with the some arrangements we have connected to the needle ok or pointer and uh, that dial is calibrated in terms of pressure. Here you see this movement I can put a on a shutter is not it. So, light is coming in and light is coming out with the collimeter lens and all these things whatever we have ok. So, light is coming parallel like this one, it is one, then I think again it is coming to there, right. Then what will happen if it moves? So, the uh, this uh, shutter will move inside, shutter will move inside this, uh, I should draw like this one. That means, if it if the tip moves, that means if the shutter will all will go inside. So, it will the intensity of light will modulate it. So, if it is goes entire end, so I can I should say that it is the region the large scale. 
So, this intensity of light also will be varied according to the pressure which is giving inside the Buddha C tube. So, that can be calibrated in terms of pressure, right. Now, movement of the shutter changes the intensity of light transmitted between the fibers. This is used to measure the displacement of various devices as I told you Buddha tubes. Buddha tubes actually we know that we have basically a tip movement is uh, uh, with there are some sector and pinion and all those things you will find it is converted to a, uh, uh, a circular movements on a scale. And we can use it for a diaphragms also, also for the bimetallic thermometer same events but diaphragm what will happen we know that we very easily now we have a diaphragm. So, if the pressure in diaphragm is stretched diaphragm it looks like this. Okay. So, if the its pressure increases it moves like this one. So, if I now include a shutter here and again lights will come here lights are coming out light in light out then what will happen the shutter I mean position of the shutter will give you the intent will modulate the intensity of light. So, this intensity of light can be calibrated in terms of pressures because here I am giving the pressure. So, diaphragm will bend like this one is not it. Also, in the case of um, bimetallic uh, strip, as you know, the bimetallic strip, what will happen, which is used for the measurement of temperature, also for it can be switched. If the temperature increases because of the two different um, uh, alpha 1, suppose this alpha 2, that means the different coefficient of expansion, so it bends like this one, right. So, now if this tip is moved connected to a, uh, a, a shutter, so obviously what will happen, you will find that. This will this will be modulated, right? So this is the one other way of uh, doing that thing. See, so another type of intrinsic sensor uses cable, uh, where the core and the cladding have similar diffractive indexes but different temperature coefficients. This is used as a temperature sensor. Temperature rises causes the diffractive indexes to be uh, even closer together and losses from the core to increase because if the diffractive index is almost same there will be more and more loss to the cladding there will be no total internal reflection. So, thus reducing the quantity of light transmitted at the which will be received at the receiving end. Refractive index variation is also used in the form of intrinsic sensor used for cryonic de leak detection. The fiber used for this has a cladding whose refractive index becomes greater than that of the core when it is cooled to cryogenic temperature. The fiber optic cable is laid in the location where cryogenic leaks might occur and if any leaks, leaks do occur light traveling in the core is transferred to the cladding where it is attenuated. Cryogenic leakage is thus indicated by monitoring the light transmission characteristics of the fiber. Another use of the diffractive index variation is the found in the device which is detected in the oil in water in many cases it is necessary to detect. So, that case what is the principle you see? This uses a special form of cable where the cladding is sensitive to oil. Any oil presence diffuse, uh, diffuses into the cladding, so oil will be diffused in the cladding and change the refractive index of the cladding. So, obviously, light again will be light will be if the refractive index changes, so, so it will uh, change the transmission of light because the light will because in the multimode fiber obviously there will be total internal reflections, so that will prevent the total internal reflections. So, at the receiving end whatever the light will receive that will have a less intensity right. Unclad fibers are used in a similar way in this any oil present settles on the core and allows the light to escape right. So, that is another thing. The extrinsic sensors uh, okay, thank you. extrinsic sensors extrinsic fiber optic sensors use a fiber optic cable normally a multimode one to transmit the modulated light from the conventional sensors. Okay, as I told you just to give an example that the in measurement of temperatures of a jet engine uh, exhaust on the jet engine where we can use an uh, optical pyrometer, but the light is to be transmitted to the optical. That is type of sensors we are calling it extrinsic sensors instead of ex intrinsic sensors. So, it is not fiber optic as a sensors as such, but the transmissions of the light from the uh, in optical mode to the conventional sensors. A major feature of the example sensors which makes them so useful is that they are able to reach places which are otherwise inaccessible. As I told you a jet engine which is traveling at a height of 40,000 feet and it is uh, inaccessible. So, it is in that case optical fiber is very suitable. One example of this is the inner, uh, insertion of fiber optic cables into the engine of aircraft to measure temperature by the transmitting light into an optical pyrometer located remotely from the engine. Extrinsic fibers optic sensors provide excellent protection of measurement signals against noise corruption. So, that is inherent to the any optical fiber sensors it is immune to the electrical noise, a charge anything it does not matter. 
and moreover two, two optical fiber can go side by side without having any cross talk which is not possible in the electrical fiber. If I take the thermocouple uh, uh, trans I mean lead wire two thermocouple lead wires goes parallel then if there is a surge in one that will affect the other thermocouple lead wires also. So, after obviously that will affect the output which you will see. Unfortunately, the output of many forms uh, of conventional sensor is not in the form which can be transmitted by a fiber optic cable. Conversion into the electrical form must therefore take place prior to transmission. For example, in the case of platinum resistor thermometer, temperature changes are translated into unbalanced voltage of a piston bridge, right. The unbalanced voltage is modulated and launched in the fiber optic cable through the usual type of transmission because unbalanced voltage I can unbalanced voltage also will always give the measurement of uh, temperature, but that will can be modulated that can be converted through a, um, the, that voltage unbalanced voltage we can give to a lead accordingly it will give the light intensity. So, the intensity of light will be uh, modulated will be dependent on the unbalanced voltage. So, obviously, the intensity of light will be measured of the temperature of the uh, object in which we put the RTD. This complicates the measurement process and means that the uh, low voltage power cables must be routed with the fiber optic cable to the transducer. One particular adverse effect of this is the advantage of intrinsic safety is lost because we are using the electrical system. So, that intrinsic safety which we talked about so much of the optical fiber that is lost there. Now, fiber optic instrumentation networks looks like this that little or any savings arise of the installing the fiber optic links in instrumentation networks indeed they may be cost penalty because many sensors we are using however, there are great advantage in terms of the links immunity to corruptions of the signal carries. Immunity to current surges caused by the stray electromagnetic fields also affords protection to the computers in the network as such can cause the software corruptions. As with the fiber optic sensor, the cost of the short fiber optic links in instrumentation networks is dominated by the cost of the terminating transistor. That is a problem that means everywhere I need a transmitter and receiver that limits the use of that increasing the cost. But in some applications as I told you safety is most important. So, in that type of situation we should not consider for the cost right. However, as the length of the fiber link becomes greater the cost of the fiber optic cable becomes more significant. The cheapness of the plastic cables is attractive for instrumentation network, but they cannot be generally be used because it has a large loss as I told you it is a large signal alternation in a plastic cable, but in the short range it is very useful because that will reduce the cost of the fiber. Though as I told you repeatedly the cost of the fiber is insignificant compared to the cost of the transmitter and the receiver. One disadvantage of the fiber optic compared with electrical conductors in network is that the light connections at the ends of the cables are much more costly than the electrical connections and branching of the light through the cables is not is, is difficult to improve. What is that? You see it is very simple what it looks like this. I have electrical circuits like this one ok. I can have branch it, I can make a another branch, I can make a another branch or I can make a another branch like this one ok. I can do like this one, I can put like all the different branches being possible, but in the optical fiber it is very difficult. If I need branching I need another transmitter there ok, so the bend of light is not possible ok, which is very easy in the case of optical in the electrical system. The current research is focused on the distributed sensors measuring different process variables along a fiber optic cable. Alternately sensors of the same type which are located at a various points along a cable are investigated as a means of distributed sensing of a single measured variable ok. That is only possible, but it is coming out the fiber optic sensors are coming out very fast. I mean we think that within few decades I think within the next decade the fiber optic sensors will dominate it will replace all the electrical sensors or electrical transmission systems in the instrumentation networks in any process industry. With this I come to the end of the lesson 29 of industrial instrumentation.